Welcome, dear traders. You are watching a recap of the Asian session on September 25. Last week, markets assessed the monetary policy decisions of the world's leading central banks. And today, stock markets are trying to recap losses. In Japan, stocks are soaring on a continued alto loose monetary policy and a weak yen. Futures on the U stock market indicators are also rising. However, Asia's stock markets are weakened by lingering concerns about the crisis in China's real estate market. The crisis in the real estate sector, which accounts for 25% of the China's economy, seems to have taken a new turn. Late Sunday, Evergrande announced that it would not be able to do any new debt insurance. It seems that the real estate developer has completely sunk under the weight of the world's largest debt, revealing the full extent of China's property crisis. The ongoing investigation into its main domestic subsidiary started the new troubles. Hengda Real Estate Group is under investigation by China's securities regulator on suspension of disclosure violations. It, uh, re in response to the news, Evergrande shares plummeted by about 24%. Asia-Pacific markets also returned to the cautioned sentiment. Equities have also come under pressure from rising oil prices, expansive yield spurs inflation and forces central banks to maintain the hawkish stance for longer than expected. For example, at the end of June, the Fed was planning four rate cuts in 2024. By its September meeting, that number had been reduced to two. As the market saw this um, as a hawkish signal, the US dollar traded near its highest level since early March on a Monday, holding above 105 and 50. As a result, the dollar index surged to 105 and 60 against the basket of its G6 counterparts in Asian trading. Treasury yields also rose at the end of the week. However, the dollar's trends is being tempered by weak economic indicators from the U.S. economy. For example, the index of a business activity in the U.S. services sector slowed to an eight-month low and industrial production continued to decline due to high borrowing costs. Nevertheless, the U.S. dollar trades higher in Asia and today it was moving in the green trading range of 105 and 50 and 105 and 60. The dollar has transcended the most against the Japanese yen in recent sessions. As the Bank of Japan kept its alto loose monetary policy unchanged at Friday's meeting, the greenback soared to an almost 10 months high of 148 and 40 points at the end of the last week. Meanwhile, the yen transcended to 147 and 30 overnight on the Bank of Japan's comments. However, after the Bank of Japan's rate decision on a Friday, it soared sharply and this move confirmed the yen's weakness rather than the US dollar's strength. Today, the dollar-yen pair is trading above the level recouping its losses. In addition, US Treasury yields also fell at the beginning of this week. As a result, the yen was able to take a breather and consolidate within the daily range of 148 and 20 and 148 and 50 against the US counterpart during Asian trading. Nevertheless, the Japanese currency is close to the level of 150, which is closely watched by the Japanese authorities. At the same time, Bank of Japan Governor Kizuo Ueda dashed hopes for a change in uh, the alto-loose monetary policy. Against this backdrop, the yen could strengthen only if the authorities intervened in the forex market. Japanese officials have repeatedly mentioned that the main trigger for their intervention in the currency market is not the price level but sharp movements in the pairs quotes. Given all the warnings from the Japanese regulator, markets do not expect them to intervene to help the weakening yen. 
Last week, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen spoke about the weak yen, and her comments gave the green light for the Bank of Japan to intervene. However, Yellen cl clarified that the next intervention of a Japan to buy the yen depended on the details of the situation. And the US dollar has continued to strengthen against its antipodes in counterparts as a risk aversion prevails in the markets. And the US Federal Reserve may continue to make rate hikes. As the US economy continues to show surprising resilience compared to the rest of the world's economies. Against this backdrop, the collapse of China's real estate market looks even more alarming, pushing the OSI down to 0.6422. Meanwhile, elevated oil prices are likely to support the OSI's consolidation in the range of a 0.6415 and 0.6449. On the other hand, the greenback is hampered by a cautious market sentiment earlier this week as it awaits fresh US economic data. For the New Zealand dollar, the situation looks more desperate. The Kiwi reached an almost four-week high of 0.5961 in the previous trading session, and it started the new week with a bearish trend. On a Monday, the Kiwi dollar pair was trading lower at 0.5950, and the fresh domestic data showed that a New Zealand trade deficit hit a 10 months high in August. In addition, the decline in both imports and exports continued. Notably, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand will hold a meeting next week. The overall inflation rate is declining. In the second quarter, it reached the lowest level in a year and a half. Therefore, the regulator is likely to keep its monetary policy unchanged. Meanwhile, the Kiwi is falling within the daily range of 0.5943 and 0.5966. And that's all for now. Leave your comments below and don't miss our next video review. Remember that staying up to date is the key to success in your trading. See you online soon.